Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and we are here with this month's PC build. Building the cheapest PC possible on PC Pipe Picker with brand new parts. Now to be clear, today's build is all about cheap parts. It doesn't mean we're trying to get the best and let's face it, if you were to pay 10 or 15, maybe even $20 more for certain components, you could be seeing a night and day difference. But today, we're really focusing on what is the least amount of money you could spend on PC Pipe Picker to build a full fully fledged system. That's a CPU, video card, motherboard, uh, hard drive, and also to SSD, the complete package for a whole type of system. Now again, to be clear, it's not the most practical system that you should be building. And also to yes, you could spend a little bit more. So before someone yells at me in the comment section saying that you could pay just a few dollars more and get so much more performance. Yeah, I totally agree with you. But today we're focusing on the least amount of money you could put towards a system. And there'll be also to a couple parts that I really just don't recommend like the power supply but either way let's get straight into the build and kicking things off with the CPU the CPU is something that I kind of would like to spend 15 to 20 dollars more on to get a better package but we picked up the AMD 2650 dual core CPU as I said it's really not the greatest at a sad 1.45 gigahertz on both cores with a 28 nanometer architecture sure AMD may be making waves with their latest AMD Threadripper and also to Ryzen chips it's really not showing in their old school Sempron APU. It is one of the lowest ends available. Short may be better with R3 graphics, but let's face it, this part is really not going to be doing that much. And for just about 10 or so dollars more, we could be stepping up to something that is much better out of both AMD, but also to Intel if you want to spend a little bit more. So it is a very limiting option. Now, speaking of limitations, we also do then get the motherboard. Now, because we picked such a cheap CPU, we had to pick up a motherboard that would actually support it, being an AM1 socket motherboard. And for this, we grabbed ourselves the Gigabyte GA-AM1M-S2P motherboard. Now, whilst it may be definitely designed for older chips, it actually has some pretty modern connectivity. It supports dual DDR3 slots with a 16x physical slot running at 4x mode, so do keep that in mind. We're also to then looking at a piece PCIe 1X slot and a standard PCIe slot, so in terms of internal connectivity, it isn't actually too bad. And that continues around to the other side in terms of rear I.O. We get ourselves two USB 3.0 ports, some decent USB connectivity, and also do a respectable Realtek ALC887 chipset. And for those old school people out there, we also do get ourselves a parallel port and heck, even a serial port. So in terms of connectivity, even though this board may be for lower end or older CPUs, it's actually not too lacking in the connectivity department. Department. If you're building a system similar to this for kind of office tasks and basic word processing, browsing the internet, the connectivity on this guy actually isn't too bad. Moving on, we do get ourselves the RAM configuration, which is a single 1x4GB kit from Kingston. This is a DDR3 kit running at 1333MHz. It's nothing special, it's nothing flash, it's a green PCB. It really isn't that great, but it is $21.79, so it isn't too bad. And just as a quick side note, Amazon Australia has finally set up and got PC parts selling, so that's why we're seeing a weird price, $21.79. Now, storage-wise, this is where I didn't want to compromise. I wanted an SSD, and I also too wanted a hard drive. And for less than $100, we got both. Now, for the SSD, we grabbed ourselves the Kingston A400, which we checked out in this video right here, a very respectable SSD for the price point it does come in. Sure, it may only be 120 gigs, but it is definitely enough for an OS drive and some basic components like Microsoft Word, some web browsers and stuff like that. In terms of storage, mass storage is also too definitely coming down and we managed to pick ourselves a Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard drives, which means we can actually source some stuff and actually get some decent boot times, meaning this PC may not necessarily be a complete dud when it comes to more entry level and basic office type applications. Now looking at the actual price, we got both of those two things for less than $100 Australian, which is really, really awesome. And something that you would have only found a couple years ago on mid to high end systems for well over two to $300. So it's nice to see that such a low end and low cost computer can have both the SSD and hard drive that you would expect from a much higher end system. Now, if we wanted to save a little bit of money, we could have thrown out that hard drive and just paid the little bit of money for the SSD, but overall not a too bad package. Now in terms of 
that video card, we are looking at another case where if we spent another $10, $20, we could have got much better performance. But in this case, we're looking at the MSI Radeon HD 6450, a 1GB VRAM capable card with DDR3 VRAM to be clear, and with a low profile design, HDMI connectivity, DVI, and also two VGA that kind of rounds out the best performance here. In fact, the VRAM on this guy is actually slower than the system RAM in the system, or so the website claims. Either way, it isn't exactly the world's fastest card. Short might be able to put out a HD signal, but really we're not going to be expecting that much more. And short may be a step up over the inbuilt APU graphics. At the end of the day, it's really not going to be that much more great. For a few extra dollars, however, we could have stepped up to something like the GT710, which will offer us much better performance when compared to that older AMD card. But in the spirit of cheap systems, well, we had to go down this road. Begin another $15 to $20, you could easily step yourself up to something a lot better. And heck, if you wanted to spend maybe $30 more, you could grab yourself something like the GTX 1030, which is going to run circles around any of the cards that we just mentioned. Now, case-wise, there's also to another sort of thing, just like the motherboard, where it actually wasn't too bad. We picked ourselves up the Rosewell FBM X1. Now, this is an MATX case, and damn, it's actually got some pretty interesting features. With a relative clean design it also too has a freaking side panel window absolutely crazy in fact I remember a time when budget cases like this wouldn't even have a painted interior. This guy's got painted interior, it's got itself a side panel window, it's actually giving us quite a bit for the money we are paying for it. Although unfortunately, for the components we picked out, it's really not going to be something you want to look inside of because the coolers are going to be pretty boring, the video card's pretty boring, the RAM is pretty boring, there's no LEDs, it's a pretty boring system, but for very cheap prices, we're actually getting ourselves something that we haven't really seen too much. I, I still remember a couple years ago, you could not get a single case under $100 that had a side panel window. It's just a few short years ago, and now we've got this little guy here. So I'm actually really impressed with what Rose will have done. Sure, the build quality and construction may not be the world's most premium, but hey, side panel window can't go wrong. Then we get to the power supply. The power supply is another one of these things that I really just cannot recommend. And it's one of these things that I don't just say, you know, spend an extra couple dollars here. It's actually don't cheap out on your power supply. From actually experiencing it firsthand of a power supply just exploding from being really cheap, your power supply should be something that you do not cheap out on. And well, it is something that again, clear warning, do not buy this power supply. Nothing against Logsys. It's just not a power supply you should be buying. I strongly recommend against it. But again, in the spirit of this type of build, we picked ourselves up the Logsys 480 watt unit that looks straight out of a Dell pre-built, ready to set your house on fire. So again, to be clear, I do recommend spending a little bit more on the power supply. Go for something from a reputable builder and manufacturer so you can actually get something that won't just kill all your parts and won't set your house on fire. So please don't buy this power supply. For the sake of the video, we are putting this in the build, but if you were building a build similar to this, please just get yourself a better quality power supply. After that, we throw ourselves in a copy of Windows from Kingwin, and that's about it. For 325 Australian dollars, we get ourselves a full PC tower. Now, to be clear, if you wanted to grab yourself keyboard, mouse, speakers, and a screen, you'd be looking at closer to 500 Australian dollars, but uh, damn, definitely a not too bad price point here. And if you're over in the US, it's closer to that 150 US dollars to 200 US dollars for this entire build setup. So that's a pretty decent budget little build. Now if you were looking at this kind of build to sort of see what kind of gaming, to be clear you're not going to be really gaming on anything just about at all. The point of this video was to do a mega budget system and it was to find out what kind of parts you could buy rather than what would be the best for gaming on a super tight budget. Again, 150 to 200 US dollars or about 300 so Australian dollars, it's actually really not going to be doing too bad in the office tasks but as for actually gaming on this thing, I really think it's not going to do that Great, sure you'll be able to launch some games, but honestly, I think you'll be playing at 720 low or even 480p low because the GPU and the CPU just won't cut it in a lot of modern titles. Don't get me wrong, you could easily play some more indie games on really low settings again, but this thing would definitely be more geared towards office and light type of tasks. Maybe you're a student who doesn't have a whole lot of money and need a computer to be typing up your Word documents, browsing internet, watching videos and that kind of stuff. It is going to be a little bit limited. Sure, the video card will be fine for office works, but the 4 gigs of RAM will definitely 
definitely limit you if you are a heavy Chrome Tab user. And uh, the SSD will be great, but you know, there are other components that could be a lot better. But let me know down in that comment section if you think I should build this system because it's actually really cheap. And honestly, I'm really interested as well to see how this guy would actually perform. Sure, I speculated about it, but speculating is one thing, building is another. So let me know down below if you want me to build this system. Also too, while you're down there, check that description box for all the parts that we did talk about today and also to a power supply that I would actually recommend picking up will be linked down there. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.